Now, I know that I'm quite late with this review. Uh, we actually got this monitor ages ago and I made loads of promises on Twitter that it will be done soon. But unfortunately, it was one of those things that just kept being postponed due to our move and I never got to just properly sit down and actually finish it. So finally, after a couple of months of waiting, let's talk about the Aorus FV43U, which is a pretty impressive 43 inch monitor that has a VA panel with a 4K resolution and 144 Hertz refresh rate. It is one of the very few gaming monitors with an actual and proper HDR experience with its Display HDR 1000 label. And it also comes with HDMI 2.1, making it a very good choice for console gamers as well. So it definitely ticks a lot of boxes and they kind of included all the key features needed for this to be an ultimate gaming monitor. But does it make sense to spend $1,000 or 950 euros to get it? Or should you just grab an OLED TV instead? Let's check it out. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their new HS80 RGB wireless gaming headset. The HS80 offers everything you would want as a gamer, including great audio with plenty of bass, Dolby Atmos support, a sleek design with a very comfortable fit and a long battery life so you can easily game for hours without any interruptions, and a microphone quality that is actually good. Whether you like to game on a PC or you prefer your PlayStation consoles, the HS80 will be an excellent choice for both. Check it out using the links in the description below. Since this is a very large screen, Gigabyte opted for a TV-like metal stand. It does look very nice and it is quite sturdy, but just like on a TV, it doesn't really offer any flexibility at all. Now, you cannot tilt it, there is no height adjustment or any rotation whatsoever. You can vase mount it if you want to and that will add some movement to it. As it is a pretty big display, you will need a lot of space on your desk and it also means that it will be best to enjoy it from a little bit of a distance. It is more meant for sitting back and playing a game than leaning forward and doing some work. While the front looks more like a TV, the back of the monitor definitely has a bit of a gaming feel to it. And whether you like it or not, that will come down to personal taste. But either way, you won't be able to see much of it anyway. As far as connections go, you get two HDMI 2.1 ports and one DisplayPort 1.4. So that will be enough for two consoles and a PC. And there is also a Type-C input, a USB hub, and they also included the KVM option. So, you can connect your keyboard and mouse to this and then use them for both your PC as well as a laptop or a tablet that you connect via the Type-C port, which is pretty cool. Now, unfortunately, the power delivery over Type-C is limited, so you cannot charge and use your laptop using one single cable. I also wish they kind of thought a bit more about cable management here. There is no way to really nicely route the cables in the back and the power connector is all the way on the other side of the monitor, which can complicate things a bit more, especially if you wall mount it or if the back is visible. Now, it does come with a little remote control as well, but you do have to remember that this is a gaming monitor. It is not a TV, so you can actually control some of the settings and some of the features from the comfort of your couch, but you cannot flip through TV channels. The OSD itself is pretty good with lots of options, with lots of color presets and some game enhancers like you would expect to see on a high-end gaming monitor. It does feel a bit faster and a bit snappier than on some previous Aorus models, which is always good to see. When it comes to image quality, the first thing you'll notice is that it has a bit of a semi-gloss panel. It's not going to be nearly as reflective as an OLED, but you will see it a bit. Now, when it comes to both color and brightness, this is where this monitor truly shines. The peak brightness in HDR mode is almost 1100 nits, which is actually more than most OLEDs I've seen. And while OLED really loses a lot of brightness when you have a large white area due to its power limits, this monitor does not. So even on a full white screen, you will get around 1000 nits in HDR, which is enough to make you wear sunglasses inside. Now, obviously you won't get those OLED black levels and infinite contrast, but 5000 to 1 is still pretty exceptional and quite above average, even for a VA panel. So HDR gaming or watching HDR content really comes to life, and that is what this monitor does really well. 
Even in SDR mode, full screen brightness hits around 850 nits, which is again pretty extreme on a large screen. Colors are great too, with full sRGB coverage and almost complete coverage of the DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB spectrums as well. Uh, the factory calibration is decent. The default profile is aimed towards a DCI-P3, but it does show some oversaturation. Now to me personally, slight oversaturation is great for gaming, where those poppy colors just add a bit to the experience compared to the standard sRGB. But if you do any color critical work, you should tweak that a bit. Uh, there is an sRGB profile too, which shows reasonable accuracy, and it would be good enough for some casual photo and video editing. Also, in all profiles, the white balance is set to warm, so you should adjust that as well in the OSD. Because it's a VA panel, viewing angles are reasonable but not amazing, so you should always try to position yourself straight in front of it, as it will lose brightness and color if you're looking at it from an angle. Now, this is something IPS and OLED panels just do much better. In terms of speed, the total latency, so input lag plus pixel response time, comes in around 9 milliseconds behind the fastest 360 Hz displays on the market. It is about as fast as the G1 OLED TV and a little bit faster than the previous OLED model. Now, you shouldn't get a large 43 inch gaming monitor to seriously compete in esports titles to begin with, and you should know that typical smaller monitors will give you a few milliseconds of advantage, but subjectively, Fast-paced shooters do feel quite smooth and you won't really notice that much of a difference in terms of speed. So for casual esports players, this monitor will be more than fast enough. There are a few overdrive modes to fine-tune your speed experience, but they don't really affect the total latency as much as you would expect. Now the fastest mode is unfortunately completely unusable due to overshoot, so I would just avoid that one personally. And the balanced and picture quality modes offer the best overall experience. Balanced is slightly faster and shows very low levels of overshoot, while the picture quality mode is just behind in terms of speed, but it has no overshoot at all. Both are fine in my opinion, and I think it's best to just try them out for yourself and just see which one fits you best. I personally left it in the balanced mode. Considering it's a VA panel, you should be ready to see some ghosting, especially in fast games and in those dark areas of a game. Uh, this is simply unavoidable, even if the panel is relatively fast for a VA. Uh, you will also need an RTX 3080 or something in that line to be able to run games on a 4K resolution, but it is good to know that this monitor does support VRR for consoles, AMD and Nvidia GPUs, so even the heaviest of titles will look smooth and feel smooth. Even though this monitor does so many things so well, there are definitely a couple of downsides that I want to talk about today, and the first one is a bit odd. Uh, it was actually pointed out in a review by Kid Guru. So apparently, the HDMI ports are limited to 24 gigabits, meaning that devices connected via HDMI need to support DSC to get 4K 120 or 144 Hz without losing image quality. Now, both recent GPUs and the Xbox can do that just fine, but if you have an older GPU or a PS5, you will end up with some chroma subsampling. I did connect my PS5 to test that out, and I have to admit that it's actually pretty hard to see any impact while gaming, so if you just game, I wouldn't worry about that. But if you plan to work in Windows a lot with an older GPU connected via the HDMI port, chroma subsampling would lead to some uncomfortable fonts, so make sure that you avoid HDMI and just connect via DisplayPort instead. The second thing I want to point out is the uniformity. Now, I know this is another typical weakness of larger VA panels, but it actually performs below average even for a large VA panel with more than 20% drop in brightness in each of the corners compared to the middle with the top left corner closer to 25%. Now, you can definitely see it when you show a single color full screen, but it won't be noticeable if you're just watching something or if you're just playing a game. Now, I do think that this is a bit of a shame for a panel that actually offers such wide range of colors, so it will be good enough for some casual editing, but if you're really serious about that high-level creative work, this would make it unusable, and I would just recommend getting a proper IPS alternative instead. 
The last downside is the power consumption, which is high at around 83 watts. Now, obviously a larger panel uses more power, but even for a 43 inch panel, this is on the high side. The speakers are surprisingly okay, which is not something that I would say for a great majority of gaming monitors. You get plenty of volume to play games from afar, and it is actually pretty enjoyable to listen to. Now, I would still probably recommend getting a nice speaker set to match this or a nice sound bar if you have space, but you can actually just do without as well. And that is all I have for today. Now, purely from a gaming and content watching perspective, this monitor really does offer a great experience. It is bright, it has the colors, it offers proper HDR, uh, gaming is nice and smooth, and it actually has good speakers. It is an okay all-around monitor as well, but I do want to point out that if you spend most of your time out of game, there are better options on the market. Now, the biggest competitor for this monitor is obviously OLED. And if all you do is play games and watch movies and shows, OLED is another step up that is impossible to beat in terms of image quality. But OLED also isn't perfect. For now, it starts at 48 inches, which might be too large for somebody. Uh, it generally still costs a bit more. And of course, there's the infamous burn-in issue, which is a real concern if you do plan to have it as a main display for your PC. Uh, Linus actually did a few videos about it recently that are definitely worth checking out if you plan to go the OLED route. But if you do choose to go for a large VA panel, this monitor is a very solid choice, especially if you want a good HDR experience. And I think $1,000 or 950 euros is pretty reasonable for what you are getting, as that makes it cheaper than any other large fast 4K alternative, at least when you look at the prices here in the EU. Now, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this monitor or do you prefer an OLED screen? And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to Tech Testers to never miss an upload. Bye guys and see you in the next one.